Hi, this is Eric Martin with Board Game Geek. I'm here today looking at Hinami Koji, a two-player design by Kota Nakayama, published in Chinese and English by Emperor S4 Games, and to be published in English by Quick Simple Fun Games. This is, as I said, a two-player design that plays in about 10 to 20 minutes over one or more rounds in which players compete tug-of-war style for control of geishas. And as soon as you have a sufficient number of geishas or enough geisha power, uh, on the geisha rating scale, of course, under your employ, you win the game. How does it work? Here are the components in Hanami Koji with seven large geisha cards, each card highlighting the artistic specialty of that geisha. You have a token on each card. You have a set of four action tiles for each player and a deck of 21 cards. And the 21 cards come from the numbers at the top of these cards, which in this case are in Japanese, where there are two yellow, two red, two purple in the deck, three orange and three blue, four green and five pink. At the start of a round, you shuffle the deck and deal six cards to each player. Those cards go in their hand and the rest of the cards are placed as a deck. On a turn, you draw the top card from your deck, add it to your hand, and then take one of your available actions. What are the different actions? You can take one card from your hand and put it under this tile. You turn the tile face down to show you cannot use it anymore. On a turn, maybe I choose three cards, show them to my opponent. They choose one of those cards, put it in front of that geisha, and you get the other two. You flip over that token. It's no longer available. You can do these in any order. I draw, I choose two cards, and put them under this tile. That is my action. I draw... Well, I have four cards left. There's only the four card action. I split these cards into two piles and my opponent chooses one and I get the other pile. The end of a round in Hanama Koji will look something like this, with seven cards in front of each player, three cards put aside under the two different tiles, one card put aside, not used during the round. Each player takes the single card, reveals it and adds it to the appropriate collection and then you see who controls which geisha is based purely on the number of cards that you have in front of you. Has more yellow, so this time the opponent gets control. I get control of the red, the purple is tied. Blue goes to here, orange here, green is tied, pink goes over here. You look and see whether someone controls either four geishas, which is not the case here. Uh, I have two, my opponent has three, or you have 11 power of geisha. Here I have seven, they have eight. No one wins, but the tokens stay where they are to show which geishas you have influenced during this round. You take all the cards back, you shuffle them together and flip everything face up and play another round. At the end of the next round, you are going to evaluate the cards again after adding the secret cards and you're going to see who wins what this time this the opponent has more so gains control i gain control control stays here in a tie control stays with the person who already has it win 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 yes if you have four geishas under your control at the end of your turn you win oh except the other winning condition this player controls five, eight, 11 power of geisha. And if you control 11 power of geisha at the end of your turn, you win. And in this case, both players satisfy one of the victory conditions, but the player who has the power wins over the player who has the number. They have greater number of power of geisha and the opponent wins the game. And there's an overview of Hanami Koji, which I've played seven times now on a press copy from Emperor S4 Games. And the summarization of the game, number one, it's beautiful. Card art is great to look at. Number two, it's brilliant. This game is incredibly tense, plays out in only 10 to 20 minutes. All of my games is, have lasted three rounds or fewer, with two of the games lasting only a single round. And the tension is there constantly because each round you have only four actions available to you. You are going to see 10 cards total and you're going to use them all. And you have to try to figure out what to do with them. You are going to make offers to your opponent 
and you hope that they choose the thing you want them to choose. But you don't know what's in their hand. You don't know what plans they have. So they take something. Hopefully, maybe you have a backup. They took that one thing, well, I'm gonna take this other and I can put it in my secret card and that's what I'll put out and I'll be able to tie with them and they won't get control. You don't know, but you make choices based on what they do and the order that they do things because the order matters. When do you bury cards? Can you bury something safely at a time so you can put off until later other actions in which you're offering or making splits of piles or doing your secret card, you're gonna draw and you're gonna see more stuff in that card you see at the start of your turn often changes what you want to do because it changes the majorities in your head. It's all about simple majorities across the geishas. You're trying to manage seven things at once. Important thing that we didn't notice at first, of course, was that the, t the control marker stays where it is in the event of a tie. So if you pay attention to that, which of course you must in order to win, all you have to do if you have control of someone is tie and you keep control. And that will help you get to that four geisha or 11 uh, point victory margin. But it's hard to do because you have to give things away that you don't wanna give. You have to throw things away when you don't wanna throw them away. You don't have control over what you, what you draw, but you have to make use of it in the best way possible. And it's that pulling constantly and you see what the other person offers and what do you think they want me to take Sometimes it's exactly what you need based on what you have, but they don't know that. At least you hope they don't know that. Oh, so, so, so good. This game is incredibly good. And it's, it's kind of blows my mind when I see designs like this because what I like in games, one of the things that really appeals to me is going head to head against someone else. I love two player games, I love just trying to outthink the other person, trying to figure out what they're doing and can I do it better than them? Can I react ahead of them acting and stay ahead that way? And this game works. This game gives me what I want in terms of that experience. It's kind of amazing.